you know, nearly every day, apart from today, I, I probably meet four or five architects and interior designers. And I sit there, they sit here, we have a chat, and basically they're here um, pitching to me because they want to collaborate with new for architecture or interior design. Yeah. And um, because we get so much deal flow, we get so much traffic coming through, maybe five or six new inquiries a week, we want to collaborate with architects and interior designers. So if I'm giving them work, yeah. they will give me work. Of course. Rather than course. like in the old days, I used to have four architects, four interior designers, which it's a one-way street, isn't yeah. it? I'm yeah. giving them uh, money for their wages. What am I getting back? Exactly. They're not bringing any deals back in. Yeah. So yeah. doing it this way, I'm turning all these people that come in here as, as lead generation. 100%. Because if I give them a side return loft conversion basement mansard, they're going to give me stuff back. Well, I'm going to tell you, and it's exactly that. And that's how I like to do business because yeah. just, just to, on that note, I actually, Savills have been uh, one of the agents and property management companies that we've had a challenge getting through the door. So getting Trio on the panel for maintenance contractors for Savills, yeah. you know, they've got a 6,000 waiting list uh, of contractors that they can choose. You know, why would they suddenly just pick Trio? There's no reason why they would, right? And, um, you know, I managed to approach the uh, Savills a director for West London in lettings. And I asked him, is he able to approach me in the right direction or who's in charge of the, they preferred suppliers list for maintenance. And within minutes, this was via LinkedIn, within minutes, he messaged me the photo show, uh, a screenshot of who does it and introduced us by email. And my reply to him was, I'm building seven flats in Collier's Wood. We're keeping them. I'm actually gonna live in one of them and I'm renting out the all six. I want to give them to you. Yeah. I don't care if yeah. I get through to the panel, but the fact that he had, you know, the the, the, the courtesy of one replying and two making the effort, because it's not his decision at the end of the day, but he put me in touch. Mm. And I think LinkedIn, just on that note, um, you know, I've done so many uh, network networking through via LinkedIn, met and built relationships with LinkedIn individuals who are active on LinkedIn. And um, it wasn't more than a, a 30 minute conversation. Mm. There was promises there, there was relationship there. I thought it went really well. I think we could have added value to each other. Um, but a lot of the time I'm finding that uh, people just want content. And I think, and I think that's a different LinkedIn, that LinkedIn is we... very, very good. But there's too many people pitching all the time. They don't have a clue how to use LinkedIn because I get email messages. Matthew I looks bet. after the LinkedIn and we just get messages all the time. Yeah. If you need wood, if you need stone, if you need this, you need the, the, the <laughs> fucking hell. Constantly asking. That's why phone call just was just exactly. saying. So constantly, 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 constantly. All they've got to do is create content, interesting content about their wooden floors and about their staff and, all, and let people come to them. And that's what we do. We produce these videos and still images, motivational, inspirational, or about our building site. And then it just happens. It just it's happens. really, really weird what, why, why it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. Because the content doesn't even have to be brilliant. You don't have to have thousands of views. Correct, correct. You could have 50, 60, 100, 200 views. And it just, it just works. Yeah, absolutely. Or likes. I always likes. say you don't have to be liked, you have to be heard. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you're not a Facebook status. And, yeah. um, you know, because we, we, we spoke about the book, Being an Author, because mm. I, I told you I'd be listening to that book, Key Person of Influence. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. And the audio book's really, I listened to it over the last yeah. couple of days. And everything, all the key points, I'm already doing. Good. Brand awareness, da, 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 da. but he said the most important one out of all of them. Which is? Writing your book. <laughs> Yes. Writing yes. your book. Yes. It says you have to become an author. Yes. Because a key person of influence will always be the author. Absolutely. He said, even if no one buys yes. or reads your book. Correct. When they do a Google search, it comes says Nick Jeffries. Absolutely. Author. Absolutely. And you can give the book away. So if we go for a business meeting, it's your, it's your business card. It's your business card. You host an event, a workshop, it's there. So when I, when I first, when I did that, I did, I, it was like a Sunday and I thought, Jesus Christ, I, I hate this school. I hate reading. I hate writing. But I sat down and, and I, I, I wrote maybe a thousand words about the, my, my beginning of my life. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. My ups and downs, my dad dying, why I am, and how I am, and all the rest of it. But all like, if I did that every couple of weeks or something, a thousand there, five hundred here, three hundred here, yeah. Even sitting That's that traffic lights on a car park. You're just so you're, you're the, the, the person who did yours was the, was the ghostwriter. Mm. And she charged you for the, the, the note, she? And what's the fee? What about was it? Uh, £10,000. Jesus. But you could have done it yourself, couldn't you? No, because I already had, I had, uh, by the time uh, I was approached by Lily, I, was, I already had uh, 14 chapters, and that's about mm. uh, 10 to 12 pages per chapter. So I had quite yeah. a bit, 14 chapters, 10, you know, that's over oh, 200 pages, over yeah. 200 pages. How many words? Oh God, uh, I, I didn't count. But, but um, it was something that I was just writing, again, like you, yeah. about where I started, where I come from, um, the challenges I've had to date, and I was projecting this book to be released, I don't know, when I was 40, 50, somewhere down the line, yeah. because you never feel worthy of enough achievement to release it. You're it's, it's, all you're doing is you're documenting your life. Exactly. That is it. But you'd be surprised how many people would be captured just yeah. by your journey growing yeah. up. And that, and how you overcome that particular yeah. phase, that will be the difference of, I'm, I can relate to this guy. Oh, this is what he... You know, you don't need to be that ultra exactly. successful individual. And yeah. I think internally, I think it's something that we just conditioned to, to think this way is I'm not valid to release a book. Who am I? Yeah. Right? But you're more than what you think. Please, no, I would do it. But it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. literally getting myself in the mindset to do it. Yeah. Because to, to sit down and, and, and what, what he does say is, is when you put words down on paper and you're going back in time you're remembering things. Oh. And when, uh, he said, after you've done one chapter, two chapters, whatever you're doing, you're generating more content when you talk to people. Because you're studying more things and you're bringing it up. You're in the moment you're of in the doing moment. it. I thought the book, I never, I never, the purpose of the book was not to achieve sales. The purpose of the book was, I knew the person I was working with was going to put me in positions that I wanted to be, which was on stage at the time, public speaking. So it wasn't to generate sales. However, when I released that book, Nick, it was the most healing experience I've ever had. I let go of so much, putting it onto paper and talking about it and actually knowing that it's public now. Mm. It, it gave me a sense of healing that I don't know how long it would have taken me to heal the way I did. Mm -hmm. It was such a release. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you spoke you about it. Before you did it, you were a little bit broken. 100%, yeah. yeah. Well, even while I was writing it, I was, uh, I was already in a good place. Uh, the business was already doing well. By the time it was published, the business had, its, the, the, you know, had turned around. But, you know, that money doesn't change anything. And yeah. the opportunities and success in the physical world yeah. doesn't change anything. You're still living with it. Yeah. So, and it's still there. So obviously writing it, mm. speaking about it, because that's the approach, right? Every time you enter a stage, uh, sort of the, the, the approach is people have to relate to you. So you do start with your story. So, so I wonder where it's going to lead to next then. You know, uh, what, you know, what, I never know who's going to phone up. I never know who's going to That's beautiful, right? I n it's like, <laughs> we've, I said it before, I've, I've got a lottery ticket and that, that lottery ticket can come in at any moment. I want to stop it for the world. You know, you know, sometimes we don't win. We don't, as business owners and entrepreneurs, you, can, you may lose for years, for years and have no money coming in, just Correct. paying everyone's wages Correct. and have nothing. But you've got that chance you're going to win. It's the and, belief. Um, it's the belief and just and, and making the opportunities. Most people don't create the opportunities. Well, I said when I was going through my phase, I couldn't find the book that I needed, so I, I, I wrote one. Yeah. So you create your own opportunity. See old Matty over there, he's 18 years old, right? He runs uh, at nightclub events okay. for, for teenagers. Nice. Matty, how much do you make in a, in a, in a night? What are you doing? Beautiful, isn't it? 18 years old. You, lovely. I'd be doing them every week, <laughs> every month. And that's, that's amazing, amazing, isn't it? Amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's such amazing things coming out. I mean, if if you can if you can um, if you can integrate technology into whatever you do, I think because technology is the future, and that's where we're all going, right? So whether we're in the building industry, whether we're in the events mm -hmm. and taking people out and showing them a good time, if in some way, shape, or form we can integrate technology, 
Um, I think the opportunities these days are endless. Mm -hmm. I mean, I actually met with an ex-banker who does who did a lot of stock exchange, and he was talking to me about the new the new thing now. And the new thing is like Instagram. It's an Instagram platform. It's not out yet, but it's going IPO next month. And it's basically you know how we get influence how we get micro influencers on Instagram mm -hmm. the social platforms, right? We get them. It mixed with all the social media stuff. There's these influencers advertising protein shakes, mm -hmm. uh, things to buy. Mm -hmm. Now. There's a new platform specifically just for micro influencers. And what the beauty of that is, for example, new, mm -hmm. Jeff, Nick Jeffries yeah. as the influencer. Yeah. And for example, you're selling cameras. Yeah. I'll approach you with a brand new camera. I'll say, Nick, I want you, because you've got a following, yeah. to talk about this camera or to yeah. show this camera on your content. Yeah. And that will have a link for me to, for the audience yeah. to buy you get a percentage of that yeah. purchase. But the platform strictly focuses on influencers. You don't do any social media on there. It's literally just so that brings influences. influences together. Together. Yeah. And gives you more exposure on your product, right? Yeah. Because Which then the influencers will go on mainstream social media. Probably. As well. As well. As well. Yeah. But you know, if you want uh, to test a product or give someone your product, you go to that yeah. particular platform. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. It's di it's different. It's innovative. Because yeah. now you know you're running down your newsfeed and it's your friend Bob, and then you've got a guy advertising. Uh, I don't know a T-shirt, and then you, you see got a friend Bob again, and then you've got another tra guy advertising mm -hmm. trainers. This one is specifically mm -hmm. for influencers, influencers, mm -hmm. and to give you the possibility to. But give I do them think that, you know, especially on uh, Instagram, I think uh, Instagram is going to slowly start dipping. You think? I do. Why? Because it's just, the algorithm has changed and it's really hard to get uh, followers, like, it, you know, maybe three, four, five years ago, it used to be pretty easy. So you felt that as well, because I have, no, in the last three months Because or so. they've all gone on to TikTok. So the TikTok is, 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 the, is the new platform where all the teenagers are now, but over the last even two or three months since I've been on there, you're getting lots of older people on there. Right. But the older people are using it like the teenagers doing sh stupid things and they, they look sh yeah. pathetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you if you just use it as you would do Facebook, Insta, Insta, Twitter normally, and just just take it easy. And the, the followers, you know, we may get 10, 20 a day. But the platform's a young platform and it's growing all oh, the yeah. time. So oh, yeah, yeah. I think, I think... You know. Well, Jim Ch Gymshark, who are uh, one of the, lo the, the lo number one and largest um, UK gym wear um, um, merchandise, yeah. basically they sell, they sell um, uh, uh, active wear. Yeah. And I was doing a lot of research because I'm launching the gym wear line and they, TikTok, took them over the line in terms of that's what because it was still it was only released in America at the yeah. time. A uh, gym shark are about I think either five or eight years old. Yeah. Um, and uh, TikTok took them over the line. Well, I, one, one of my posts. Uh, sometimes the posts go viral. I did I did one with me sitting there talking about my ex business partner. I think where it's like it's like fifteen seconds. Wow. Thirty thousand wow. views. Wow. Wasn't it? Controversial. Thirty thousand wow. views. Within it just it was going within two weeks thirty thousand views and wow. it's still going all the time, and the, and the other one was uh, me uh, getting into my rangey and it, it was like I edited so it's like speeded up, twenty five thousand views. Wow, that's mental. You you could never get that on Insta or, uh, or any other platform. Crazy. That's really good. That's really so good. every day there's there's they're saying there's more people joining TikTok, just observing. They're not creating, so there's more people viewing yeah. thing because everyone's a little bit nervous. Of course, of course, of course. How do I get? How do I work these functions? How do I do this? Do I look a prat? Do what you know? So th they're watching. The views are going up, but sooner rather or later, everyone's going to start using and producing content. So what would you, what would be your advice, Nick, for? Yeah, the younger generation that you know they already got entrepreneurship instilled in them, or well, they want to start their own. Well, what would listen, my daughter, she's sixteen years old. She's she's grown up with iPhone. I say to her all the time, do something dig digitally. You know, do some do marketing or branding or sales on your iPhone. Learn something, not just keep Swiping. using it. Don't be a user, be a creator. Absolutely. But you know, young young people, they're just they you know. I would love her to do that, but do you yeah. believe? Do you believe, or are you of the opinion of there is a formula to success? 
just creating, you know, as a formula to success is just working hard, long hours, working 10 times harder than your competition. But if I was their, their age, I'd be fucking just creating as much as possible. I wouldn't be sleeping at all. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be drop shipping. You know, when you're buying product, but I'll set up a, a Shopify channel, a, a Amazon channel, buying camera accessories or whatever. Not even buying, just, you know, you're advertising, creating Facebook ads, Instagram ads, taking the orders, taking people's money and getting the product shipped from Alibaba or DHK straight to the customer. That's what I'd be doing. But just cr having time to create those landing pages. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's landing pages. Talking call to actions. So if someone wanted to, because that is part of our plan for this year to host some workshops, and we may speak a bit further on this, on hosting workshops on how people can get into construction and maybe not do the mistakes that we did yeah. um, in maintenance and construction, uh, but also the development side. There's a lot of individuals out there that you know they know it's buying a house or buying a plot of land, getting planning and developing. But there's a lot of in betweens. Um, do you feel that there is a there is an opportunity there for workshops? Because I, in personally, I'm quite a heavy networker, yeah. and I, I do have a great understanding of what type of workshops are out there. And I haven't seen many one in our my, industry. One of my mates in Portsmouth, uh, he's got a workshop. He's he's a contractor. He's a young entrepreneur. Okay. coming out to thirty or something, maybe thirty now. Uh, and they just started their workshop, and they do some events, paid events, and uh, basically they teach contractors, trades, and small businesses about digital marketing, marketing, branding, sales. Right. Okay. Uh, trying to generate, you know, uh, you know, a, maybe a paint and decorator, how to build his funnel up, his pipeline. So they're doing it and it's quite successful. So I, I generally think most builders, most trades, they all want to be busier, but they don't know how to market themselves. So I definitely think there's an angle there to do workshops for building professionals to increase their funnel, sales, and brand, 100%. And you're referring to, when you say trade, the workers on the ground, or to businesses business, that start like Business yourself. owners. Business you know, so owners. Man yeah. in the van, could be man in the van. Could be man in the van, it yeah. It could be someone yeah. like us. It yeah. could be a big company. Yeah, yeah. Because the bigger the company, the more set in their ways they are. Of course. They, of course. they, they're relying on what recommendations. Well, unfortunately, recommendation will not feed the beast. It won't give you enough capital to run your business because you've got the next generation, you've got us and the next generation below us, tech savvy, marketing, sales, closing, building, building the funnel. Yeah. yeah. That's what the bigger companies can't do. So it's even the big companies. You know, we, you know if you, I'd be interested in doing this, like pitching to bigger, bigger con contract companies. Do you want to increase your, your top line? Do you want to make more profit? Do you want to increase you know, your funnel, sales funnel? That's easy. That's, that's easy. Because that, guess what they need to do? Stuff like this. On LinkedIn, you do see some people now talking to cameras. There was one contract the other day, and he, he was really good. He was a little bit embarrassed, a little bit you know, awkward, but he talked to the camera about how good last year was, thanking his yeah, team, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, his, all his subcontractors. He was very eloquent. He was delivering the message. And I said to him, I said, well done, mate. Brilliant. And he goes, thanks, Nick. You know? And would you say the most challenging thing for you know, people in our industry to find is people? Or any business, I guess, but do you think, yeah, uh, definitely. predominantly in ours? Definitely, because I could be the best uh, uh, marketing, branding, salesperson in the world, but the ultimately we need to have good professionals around us, the levels. So I'm at the top, then I need contracts managers, uh, project managers, site foremen, then the trades. And how can we, as business owners and in the industry, qualify these professionals? Listen, and it's very awkward because I get approached all the time by professionals wanting to work here. But it's great. They want crazy money. They need to prove it's not worth if, if they've got if they've got 10 years working for Balfour, BT or whatever. They may be brilliant, but they've worked for a big construction company and they could they can blend into the background. When you work for someone like us, Correct. all eyes are on you all the time and you want every single penny, pound of flesh off this person. They've got to do long hours. They've got to work hard. They've got to be entrepreneurial. They've got to think on their feet. They've got to do multitasking. 
they can't do that. Correct. So, you know, if anyone's out there and they do want to work with people like us, come work with us. Come Show us what you can do. For sure. Don't, don't think short term and, mm. oh, I want 50, 60, 70, 80 grand here because it ain't going to happen. Come spend some time with us. Show us what you can do. Deliver us some deals. Because if you bring us a deal, you've got a job, haven't you? You've justified. You've got your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone who works for us, you know, Connor, you know, he's he's part of the, the job by this is gonna make us money. Matty's on the phone hammering, he's on LinkedIn, do it. Because everyone's creating potential deal flow. Correct. So yeah, you know, uh, yeah, finding professional grafters. People who are grafters. I never, I've never been a graft all my life. I was a lazy, you know, in my teens, I was lazy, going out clubbing, doing all sorts of things. It wasn't until maybe I hit my late thirties, I changed completely. Even when I was doing the sort of early days with the car washing, I was making good money, but I was blowing it. And it was sure. just, now it's serious. So next month, it's my birthday, 50 years old. So from 50 to 60, I've got to keep myself fit, That's it. strong, That's it. and it's going to be the best 10 years of my life. Absolutely, absolutely. And then... So where do you envision new going? Well, I mean, know, you've already occupied an amazing space in this. So I, I, I just need, I'm, I can't do it on my own, so I need good people around me. I need like, people like you, you know, these boys here, I need p people out there. If they want to join the team and take us to the next level, like the, you know, like Finn Chatton, I know the Candy Boys are finished now. When I, when I first started in real estate in London, I wanted to be like Candy and Candy. Sure. I want to be like them. If they can do it, yeah. with zero personality, <laughs> it's going to be a piece of piss. So, you know, that's what we can do. I'm not saying I want to do tower blocks and that, but I would, it would be nice to do three, four, five, six, seven million pound projects in prime areas of London. 